this does seem to me like it's going to be a hard question. Uh, I do know what topics are going to matter right away. I can tell that I'm probably going to need to use the rules for similar triangles, right? Anytime a picture has two triangles, they're probably similar. At least the thought should come to your mind. And, and I know that these two are going to be similar, the big one and the little one, because they share angles, right? They both have a 90 degree angle. They both share angle A. And that's the only thing we really need for to, uh, to know that two triangles are similar is if they have two angles that they share, then that means the third is also shared. So that probably matters. I also think I'm going to do a little plug points into equations here because uh, they tell me the area of the triangle ABC above is at least 48, but no more than 60. If Y is an integer, what is one possible value of X? Well, ABC is the big triangle. I, I, I kind of want to write one half base times height. What do I know? Well, I know that the, the, the base is 12, right? So this whole distance is 12. So that's the the base of that triangle. I know y is the height. So I, I don't know exactly the area yet. I have a range of possible values. So let's kind of clean this up a little bit, right? So the area, one half of 12, that's six. So six y. And y is an integer, meaning it has to be, it can't be a decimal. So I don't know, let's just guess and check a little bit, right? So if y were 10, that would work, right? Because then no more than 60. 60 is no more than 60, so that maybe works. Nine also works, because that's within the range, that's 54, and it, I think eight works as well, because then six times eight would be 48, and that's that's also within the range. And I say at least and at most, that includes the endpoints. But for safety's sake, let's just say that y is nine, and then the area is six times nine, and that's 54, and 54 is at least 48 and no more than 60. So that seems okay, I guess. So uh, let's let's try it. Um, so we're making this nine, right? So, so notice it's a little guess and check. There's there are certain points on the SAT where you know the thing that makes it hard is that you're not used to a problem being open ended, right? Of of giving you a little bit of information but not specifying exactly what you need. And so in school, that's fine. You're just like a robot, just, okay, this and this go together, and this goes in this formula, and everything spits out in the end, and there's your answer. The SAT forces you to make decisions in places where normally you're just given a straight-up instruction, and that really bothers people. So if you had trouble with this little move here of just coming up with a number, you're going to have to get over that fear. You There will be questions where you have no choice but to do a little bit of a guess and check. And so, yeah, we've satisfied all the conditions. Uh, nine is an integer and the area is uh, between 40 and 60. So I think we're good. So what is one possible value of X? Well, now I think the similar triangles thing is going to commit, right? Because I have to make a comparison. So if I'm doing the big triangle, ABC, and I'm trying to compare that to the little triangle, let's call this uh, ADE, just for the sake of having some uh, understanding here, right? So a comparing those two, let's make some fractions. And I know two things about the big triangle. I know that y is 9, so that's the height. And I know the base was 12, right? The full distance, if you put 7 on the bottom there, you're not doing similar triangles. You're doing a triangle and some weird little shape that I don't even know what this is, right? What is this thing? So I, I you can't do that. So uh, we need to do triangles. Um, and so uh, then we can do the uh, corresponding parts of the smaller triangle. So the, the y and the 9 correspond with the x that we're trying to find. And then the five is the base of the little triangle, right? So, okay, now it's just kind of a, a, a multiply situation. So uh, I'm gonna just multiply both sides by five, that crosses this out, and that gets this down to 45 over 12. So that's my x. And you can answer that in the, um, in the, the answer box there, that's fine. You can put five spots and 45 over 12 is exactly five spots, but in case we're curious what that is as a decimal, I am getting 3.75. So that, uh, I would probably put 45 over 12 as my answer, but I'll just put 3.75 because I've already started writing it. And there you go. The other answers we can kind of very quickly do, right? Because all we have to do is realize that Y also could have been, uh, we said eight and we also said 10. So the only thing that really changes here then is the this number at the top. So we're going to do five 
times eight over uh, 12, right? So uh, five times eight is 40. So 40 over 12, that does reduce. So 40 over 12 reduces to 20 over six, or we can divide by four, so that's 10 over three. So 10 thirds, which I believe is 3.3. Yeah, so this would be 3.333. And we need three threes there at the end after the decimal. And the reason for that is the student produced response is very picky with decimals. If we cut it off too early, we're gonna get it wrong. So that's why that in that case, 10 thirds, I definitely would have put in. I would not have de dealt with a 3.333, even though that's right, I would have been nervous about it. And then here we would have done five times 10 over 12. Uh, the 10 reduces to a five, the cells is to six, so that's 25 over six. Again, you can put that in, 25 divided by six, that was a decimal, is again, another messy one, 4.166, which you could put in as 4.167 because those sixes repeat. And th so technically you can either truncate, which means just cut it off when you run out of space, or you can round the last spot before the end. Uh, so that's confusing. That's confusing to me. That's why I like to do death, uh, fractions for things that are thirds and sixths and other weird uh, fraction numbers. But um, yeah, there you go. Any of these would have been good. So that's one, two, three, four possible answers that I'm counting. If I'm wrong, please put in the comments. That way other people know. But um, really the, the hardest part was just this, just the confidence to pick a number and, and make sure you have something to keep going. But for me, plug points into equations is what forced me to do it. Because I realize I, I can't do anything with an equation that has two variables. I need it to have more than, if I have one variable I can solve, if I have two, I'm stuck. So I need to fill in one of those things. And so those kinds of dead ends sometimes can move you forward because you're like, well, I've got to get over this obstacle. I, there's no way to proceed through the question. So it forces you to pick something and move on.